some big changes in the weather over the coming few days, quite a marked change actually from the fairly settled weather we've had for the last week or more uh, to something much wetter, more windy and unsettled over the next few days. And as ever, it's all tied down to the jet stream. This is how things are looking early part of this week. This little ridge in the jet stream here, just keeping things relatively settled in the southeast on Tuesday, but already a very active portion of jet stream out towards the northwest, driving this area of low pressure up towards the northwest on Tuesday. And further pulses, a very active jet here, spinning up areas of low pressure on the northern flank and driving them towards the UK. So a succession of low pressure systems coming and going through the next uh, few days really, right there through to the weekend, and still maintaining that zonal flow of the jet right across the Atlantic towards the UK. By the weekend, notice this slight amplification in the pattern here. Uh, so the jet stream just ridging a little bit to the north. That's gonna allow high pressure to start building down here, and that will come into play next week. Uh, but for the time being, even in the weekend, we're still in this trough in the jet stream, which basically means it's cool and showery with more of a northwesterly flow across the UK as well. So it is turning quite a bit unsettled. Transition day then is Wednesday after a fairly quiet day in southern and eastern parts of the UK on Tuesday. Already this active frontal system will be sliding southeast on Wednesday and right behind it yet more rain coming in off the Atlantic. So just running this through, the front moves south, another one comes in and so we spin up this deep area of low pressure by the end of Wednesday. The wind's picking up all the while, and you can see the sheer number of isobars here by late Wednesday evening. This chart here valid for midnight Wednesday night into Thursday. A lot of isobars. It's gonna be windy across the board, really, with outbreaks of rain. Some of this quite squally, actually, with this cold front that comes through during uh, Wednesday night. So some pretty squally conditions working from west to east uh, on Wednesday night, early hours of Thursday. But the strongest winds will be tied in to the south side of this area of low pressure. You can see the real pinch in the isobars here, just south of that area of low pressure. As that swings its way eastwards through the early hours of Thursday morning, that's when we're likely to see the strongest winds developing in quite a number of places. So this is just one model's idea, but it gives a good idea really as to the, the sorts of uh, strong gusts we could see in the 24 hour period uh, that ends on Thursday evening, but of course most of this will be happening Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So the strongest winds coming into Ireland around late evening on Wednesday, tracking east into western Britain during the uh, early part of uh, Thursday morning and then getting into eastern Britain sometime during daylight hours on Thursday morning before clearing out to the North Sea. Uh, around midday. But either either side of that, it's going to be pretty blustery, whatever's going to happen. So looking at some of the wind gusts here, I mean, parts of Southwest Ireland could well see gusts of 80 or even higher miles an hour on Wednesday late evening. And again, Snowdonia coming up here with some gusts over 80 as well. But even in land, we're looking at gusts here, 50, 55, maybe 60 in a few places during the course of Wednesday night into Thursday morning and locally enhanced where we've got those squally showers coming through as well. So quite a, a blowy old fest there during the middle part of the week. And even once this area of low pressure scoots its way through Thursday morning, I'm just going to run this through to the weekend, you can just see this constant stream of bands of showers coming in. They'll be most frequent in the west, sometimes merging to give some longer spells of rain as we'll see with this low coming through on Friday night into Saturday morning. But broadly speaking, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even into Sunday, it's pretty windy. A lot of the time there'll be frequent showers, especially in the west, but they will track further east at times because of more organised occlusions coming through in the flow. And so it's a pretty unsettled and blustery second half to the week. And you can see some of these showers will be wintry on some of the northern hills in the UK uh, as well. The area is cold enough for a bit of snow on some of the high ground. Now, by the end of Saturday, this ridge trying to build out west, remember I talked about that with the jet stream a moment ago, and so the flow is just turning more to the northwest over the UK rather than the straight westerly uh, that'll be with us over the next uh, couple of days or so. So it will be turning a bit cooler through the weekend and the direction the showers are coming from will also change just subtly around from a northwest to southeast direction by the time we get through to Sunday. You may even see the winds easing a touch by the time we get through to Sunday as well. So with things sounding much more unsettled, the best way actually to keep up to date with where the rain and showers are near you is to sign up to WQ Radar because here you can see exactly where they are in your vicinity. You can also see the official weather stations plotted on the map here. You can see how strong the winds are, for example, if you're trying to get some spraying done. Uh, good luck this week, that's all I can say. Uh, if you want to sign up, head to wqradar.co.uk and uh, have a look there. You can get lightning alerts as well, which may also be part of the weather this week with some of these thundery showers coming in with hail and gusty winds from the west uh, as well. So that's uh, this week and the weekend. Now as we go into early next week, here's our area of high pressure building, still south of the UK to start with, 
far enough south to still allow these fronts to come around the top of it. So we'll have some showers or even some showery pulses of rain sliding southeast during the early part of next week across some parts of the UK with low pressure close by uh, to the north. But towards midweek, we are likely to see this high pressure building more up from the south. And this has been a signal for quite a while now. Uh, so things might settle down a little bit across uh, many parts of the UK around midweek onwards towards the early part of next weekend. However, the position of this high is going to be key and it's not as strong a high pressure as we saw in late February, early March. So I still think we're going to see fronts toppling around the northern edge of this, bringing rain into Western Scotland. And some of these could then run southeast down the eastern side of the UK, even though high pressure is close by. So I'm not promising we're going to get a lot of dry weather from this high pressure, but hopefully things calming down a little bit, not as windy, not as wet with these sort of rain and showers becoming less frequent. But I still think the west of Scotland and then these North, North Sea coast and the eastern side of the UK could still see some rain or showers at times, just depending on where this high builds in. Now there are some computer models that build this high right over the UK and that would then kill off a lot of the frontal rain and the showers but many of them just hold it to the southwest or just to the south. And that would still allow these weather fronts to come in around the top of that and give a little bit of rain uh, here and there. So that is something to bear in mind, still a bit of uncertainty about how things might play out with, in that respect during next week. Uh, this kind of shows it up quite well. Of course, we've shown you this chance of dry day many times before. You can see different parts of the UK down here on the left-hand side and along the top, the day going forward over the next four weeks or so. The greens here showing where it's very wet and of course this week it's very unsettled so a lot of green uh, showing up for the next week or so and then by the time we get through to next Tuesday more or less we start to get more of these browns so a better chance of drier weather developing. Now remember where you see H on here uh, that basically means there's a 60% chance or more of it being dry but equally a 40% chance or less of it being wet so this doesn't guarantee you dry weather but on balance it may well be dry, but there's still a chance even these days in here could have some wet weather. There's still a bit of uncertainty. Now with the high pressure we saw in late February, early March, when I showed you this table a couple of weeks ago, we had a lot of these dark browns, these very high chance of a dry day. And that's more or less how it played out, bar the odd day where we see the, you know, a few showers. But in this spell here, the signal is weaker. So I still think there'll be some dry days in here, but maybe not necessarily lots of consecutive ones. And they could see the odd day here that offers a little bit of wet weather. But broadly speaking, the trend is strongest the further south and southwest you are for dry weather, closer to where that high pressure was set up to the southwest of the UK. We still keep these greens coming in here across Scotland. So still that risk of rain coming in from the Atlantic into Western Scotland, while the further southwest you are, you may well end up with a few dry days during this spell. It's also quite a short period here because quite quickly we go back into the greens more widely by the time we get through to the end of the week and into the weekend. And then after that, it becomes very mixed. There's not a great strong signal either way. There's perhaps quite a few greens on here, but not massively strong signal. Equally, there's not a lot of brown showing at the same time. So signals for late March, early April are a little bit mixed. There's no strong signal either way. The most likely outcome by the looks of things is the further northwest you are, the more likely you are to see a continuation of the sort of unsettled theme with rain coming in from the Atlantic. And generally, the further southeast you go, uh, the better chance of some drier days in there. But I'm not expecting a prolonged dry spell by the looks of things. It still looks quite changeable with some rain at times. But as you can see, the risk of rain is greater the further north you are and the better chance of some drier days the further south you come as well. So looking at the broad picture for week three, this is the last full week of March, uh, we've got higher than average pressure down towards the southwest. Our high pressure having built over the UK or close to the UK will likely retreat south next weekend and that will allow more of these Atlantic fronts to come back in again towards next weekend onwards. So generally wet across the north, drier the further south you are and also extending its influence into western parts of uh, Europe as well. So you can see that's slightly drier than average signal in the south, but it's a very mixed picture. There's no sort of strong indication that we are gonna have a lot of dry or a lot of wet weather for that matter. But broadly speaking, wetter than average in the northwest, drier the further southeast you come. And it actually looks a bit wetter than average across central parts of Europe uh, during this time frame as well. And it might actually end up being quite cool as well. There are signs from around the 20th onwards, it could end up being a bit of a chilly end to the month, nothing necessarily significant in terms of cold, uh, but you can see these blue colors here, suggesting below average temperatures across Western Europe. And I think the UK overall will end up being quite chilly at times during the latter stages of March, relative to normal, 
for the time of the year. Of course, at this time of the year, the temperatures are increasing quite quickly as the sun continues to gain strength. Still then, that sign of higher than average pressure to the southwest as we head into early April, weak, uh, lower than average pressure to the north, and that basically means a continuation of the same sort of pattern. On the temperature side of things, it's pretty much white everywhere, which is near average. Of course, it may not end up being this way, but there's such a huge spread in the possible outcomes by the time we get through to early April. There's no strong indication either way as to how things will play out necessarily. And on the rainfall side of things, again, it's fairly white. There's not a great strong uh, deep brown or deep green signal here. So it's fairly mixed at the moment. There's not a great deal of signal. Apart from northwest Scotland, which continues to look wetter than average, whereas the further southeast you come, rainfall is closer uh, to normal. So it is going to be quite unsettled this week uh, with some strong winds, some rain and snow on those northern hills as well. Then we go through this phase next week with high pressure building probably centred over southern or southwestern parts of the UK. So that will still allow rain or showers to come in, especially across Scotland, but perhaps also sliding into some eastern parts of England, depending on the exact orientation of the high and therefore the resulting wind direction. And that will affect the temperatures actually next week as well. It could be quite mild in any sunshine, but again, if we have a north or northeasterly flow off the North Sea, it could end up being quite grey and quite chilly in some eastern areas. And then later in the week, towards the weekend and beyond, that high pressure retreating such that it becomes a bit more unsettled again in the northwest more widely, whereas the further southeast you are, a better chance of some dry weather. And you can see I've put here wettest in the northwest. There will be a continued risk of some hill snow as well, given the fact we'll be in a fairly cool air mass uh, a lot of the time by the looks of things to end March and heading into early April. But as I say, nothing significantly cold showing up uh, at the moment, just a little bit cooler than average for the time of the year. So all changed this week after the settled weather we've had of late, and you can keep up to date as ever with the latest day-by-day -day forecast by following us on social media. Bye for now.